Good morning and welcome to the house of the Lord on this beautiful Sunday morning. Let us now prepare our hearts to worship in spirit and in truth. The call to worship this morning comes from Psalm chapter 145, verses 1 to 3. I will extol you, my God, O King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. The hymn of preparation this morning is, O worship the King, all glorious above. Please rise. be seated. This is the moment every Sunday when we can be personally and privately quiet in the house of the Lord, in his presence, and if the Holy Spirit reminds us of anything that needs attention, this is the moment that we can confess anything to him. Let's take a few moments to be quiet before the Lord. The assurance of pardon comes to us this morning from Micah, chapter 7, verses 18 to 19. Who is a God like you, 
pardoning iniquity and passing over the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. He does not retain his anger forever because he delights, he delights in mercy. He will again have compassion on us and he will subdue our iniquities. You, O oh God, will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. Hallelujah. Let's pray together. Our gracious and our loving and our holy and our all-powerful Heavenly Father, we come once again into your presence only in and through the precious name of your beloved Son and our beloved Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We bow in worship. We thank you for your mercy, new and fresh every morning, every noon, and every evening. For you are eternal, and your mercy is eternal. And we're so grateful that we have been reminded again this morning that you are a merciful God. If not, who of us would dare to approach your holy presence? But we come. We come with confidence. We come with joy. We come to worship and to magnify your holy name. Again, we want to commit our pastor and the pastoral team to you and each member of the church board and committees, anyone and everyone, Lord, who is seeking to serve you in this community. We thank you for them and we commit each one and their families lovingly to you. We thank you for our brother and Sister, who are here to minister to us this morning, again we ask, Lord, your richest blessing upon them and their loved ones and friends. We also want to remember those, Lord, who are going through a time of sickness or of great difficulty, of darkness, maybe even of depression. You know who they are, and we commit them to you in their situations at this hour. And we ask, gracious Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you in mercy will minister to every need. We pray for those, Lord, who have a burden to share your love, and your message of reconciliation with those among whom they live and work. We thank you for them. and We pray, Lord, that you will bless them and grant them much fruit for their loving labor, we pray. And let's take a moment to repeat together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Forever. Again. Amen. You don't want the angels to join in? Never mind. Praise God that he is eternal. His mercies are eternal. His power is eternal. His plans are eternal. His salvation, hallelujah. Let's turn to the back of the bulletin. And as you do that, let's just take a moment to greet one another. I'm going to greet everyone with a Thai Y, which is very convenient. The Lord bless you, and may the peace of God be with you, not only today, but throughout the coming week. People are renewing acquaintances, that's fine. It's very nice to have a lady from California here for the first time, and maybe we don't know the only time, but we want to welcome you. And uh, what's your name? Marceline. Very special name. That's a new one on me. The Lord bless you, Marceline, as you come here for a few days, and she's taking out time to be in the house of God with the people of God. The Lord bless you. On the back of the bulletins, you see two slots. I'd like to remind us again that we do have these slips of paper for anyone that wants to record a prayer, request, and or a praise item. I see both prayers and praises in the plural. So if you do have more than one, we've got space for that too. But please record <clears throat> clearly any prayer items and requests that you have so that we can share with you. Mrs. Sohail is asking for prayer. She has multiple health problems. She wants me to change the name from uh, no feeling in her legs to numbness. But uh, she does have physical problems and also family problems. We've been praying for her for now for quite a while. Let's continue to remember her. And uh, do you mind just indicating, Mrs. O'Hale, again, thank you, so that we know who you are and we can remember you in prayer. She's also given me another slip. My son is sick, has in, having chest pain and a heavy cough. He has already suffered from pneumonia. If anybody is willing to help her, she needs to go to the hospital tomorrow and pay some bills. If anybody would like to help her, please feel free. Also, let's pray for <clears throat> one of her friends or associates, Mr. Ijaz, the name is not quite spelt correctly, but God knows who he is. It should be I-J-A-Z or Z, whichever side of the Atlantic you come from. He has cancer of the liver. He has three children, and his wife, naturally, is very worried for his condition. There is also a brother among us who is facing being thrown out of his apartment through to lack of paying for his rent. If you have any concerns, Pakistan brother, you might like to try and approach him and share 
with his need. Let's pray together for one another and these various needs that have been brought to our attention. Does anyone have a need? Would you like to be included in prayer this morning? Anyone? Anyone have a praise item? Okay. No needs and no praise items. God knows our hearts. And let's pray together for one another. Our loving Father, we take this moment again this morning as we come before you in the name of Jesus. You know the needs that we represent. We are a needy people. We come to you again this morning as we bow before you and we ask, gracious Lord, that you in mercy will be meeting every need that we represent. We praise you for your mercy. We praise you for your grace. We praise you for your love. And for every time, Lord, that you have met our needs in the past, and we anticipate your meeting our needs in the future, we rejoice and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. The scripture reading this morning comes from John chapter 8, verses 31 to 32. I will be reading from the New International Version. Dispute over whose children Jesus' opponents are. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The title of the sermon this morning is The Truth Will Set You Free by Reverend Dr. Wichan Ritni Mit. Good morning. It's always a blessing to come to worship in the house of the Lord with all the brothers and sisters in Christ. So this morning, I would like to uh, share with you, it's a very famous uh, scripture and also is very, very uh, useful for all of us who are believers of Jesus Christ. Just one second and Try to get my iPad working. All right. The Bible scripture that the leader just have been uh, presented to us, the truth will set you free. It is a very... Uh, what I call it, famous Bible verse that I, before I become Christian, I always remember these Bible verses. But one thing that I realized that not too many people, as, especially we as Christian, we know the Bible verse, but how much we believe in this truth. And most of all, how do we live out this biblical truth, that the truth will set you free. And this Bible verse inside the scripture, I saw a lot of treasures of this Bible verse. There are many sermons can be made through this Bible verse, but for this morning, I just want to emphasize two of them. The first one that I like to emphasize 
the question to ask, what did Jesus mean when he said that you are really my disciples? And the second one that I want to emphasize, and what did he mean that saying, the truth will set you free? So this morning, I would just like to answer these two questions. One, are we really his disciples? The question to ask ourselves, are we really his disciples? I remember that when I was young, wasn't a Christian yet, I lived in the southern Thailand in a city called Hat Yai. And uh, I was a teenager, and I was bicycle along the street in the city of Hat Yai. And uh, there was only one church. But then a few years later, there's a church started on the Hong Tao area a small hong town, just said that the church of Jesus Christ. But two or three years later, then I saw another church started. They just said that the true church of Jesus Christ. About one more year later, <laughs> there's another church started. The name is the real truth church of Jesus Christ. So there are three church of Jesus Christ. One is church of Jesus Christ. The second one is the true church of Jesus Christ. The third one, the real truth of the church of Jesus Christ. So by then I wasn't a Christian, so I have question: which one is the really, really, truly the church of Jesus Christ? So sometimes in our lives, we said we are disciples of Christ. So sometimes we, do, we really don't think deep enough. Are we really the disciple of Jesus Christ? In what kind of criteria that we could classify ourselves as the true disciple of Jesus Christ? The second question that I would like to address this morning with all of you, the question is, Set us free. Jesus said, that if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. My question is, set us free from what? Because it's a big question. Set us free from what? So this morning, about 20, 30 minutes, I would like to spend some time with all of us to address these two issues. The first one, the true disciple of Christ. So I want each one of us to reevaluate ourselves that are we really the disciple of Christ in what criteria that we base upon. The second, set us free from what? Okay, so let us go to the first one. The true disciple of Jesus there are so many, many Bible verses to indicate, especially Jesus himself, give us indications to let us know what the real disciple of Jesus Christ. A lot of time, we ourselves to say that we are the disciple of Christ, but sometimes we don't think did Jesus will recognize us as the real disciple of his? So that is a big question that each one of us have to think about. Yes, I am a Christian. I was baptized and I was followed the, the teaching of Jesus Christ. I come to church every Sunday. But then if Jesus said, no, you are not, what would happen? So this morning, we're going to take a look, a close look. Are we really Jesus' disciples? Let's look at several Bible scriptures to, let us, to help us to evaluate ourselves 
that truly are we the disciple of Jesus? Actually, this topic is a very simple, very basic, theological. But come to the practical everyday life, sometimes we face some difficult decision to be made. The first one that Jesus mentioned that we are his disciple is the relationship. The first one is abide in Jesus. Book of John chapter 15, 1 to 8, indicated very clearly that Jesus said, I am the true vine. You are the branches. The branches have to abide in the true vine. Then the life and that connection depends, the branches depends on the vine. So that is the indication of a true disciple of Jesus. So if we want to examine ourselves, are we truly a disciple of Christ? Then we have to ask the question, does our life closely connected with Jesus, our everyday life and everyday activities of our life, do we connect it with Jesus? Because Jesus said that without me, you cannot do anything. Whatever we do without Jesus, without the power of Jesus, outside the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, is our own activities, is our own lives. This is not the lives of Jesus that we belong to him. So that is the question that we're going to ask. How closely that we connected with him in our daily life? The second Bible verse that I like to mention that Jesus said that, learn from me. Jesus said that I am gentle and humble. Therefore, learn from me. So the disciple of Jesus Christ have to be always learning from Jesus Christ. I'm growing up, even now I'm 70 some years old, I'm still attracted to the uh, so-called Kung Fu. <laughs> Kung Fu is the uh, inner power of Chinese martial art. So when, you know, when I was young, I always liked to read those cartoons with all the comics about Kung Fu. The one of the famous, the temple, you call Temple Shaolin in China. So all the uh, martial arts students have to go and learn from the master. And everyone enter that martial arts school. You learn the same art, the same thing. So after you finish learning the martial art, you become the student or the disciple of that master of that martial art. We too, as a Christian, Jesus said that, learn from me. The indication of ourselves that are we truly his disciple we have to ask the question in our daily life, do we keep on learning from him? Do we? I'm not only a pastor for many years, but also as a professor at the seminary. I always telling the seminary students that never, never, and never stop learning and stop developing your lives so that you are always become someone God wants you to become. Your full potential that God has given to you. And some, a lot of students, when they finish one level of their study, they thought that they had conquered the world. They thought, that's it, I got my license. I got my certificate, so they totally stopped developing their lives. They no more lot learning. Jesus said, learn from me. 
And I give, I'd like to give you one of simple formula about life. I always like this formula, that life activities have three, three things that I all, always want to follow. One, from the very beginning after you were born, you acting, doing something. As soon as you were born, you cry, you breathe, and you drink, and you eat, you grow, you do all kind of things until the very last minute you die from this world. You're still doing something. Life is process of doing something. But if you don't, the second point, if you're doing something but you never learn from your mistakes, from your weaknesses, from all your failures, that is not living. That is not betterment of what you're doing. The doing supposed to be evaluated to see whether what you are doing, can you do something better? Can you do something more excellent? They always say that good is the enemy of better. And then the better is enemies of the accidents. For that reason, Jesus wants us to not only doing, but want us to learn to be better, to be excellent. But through the process of learning, some people learning with pain, with bad attitude, with complaints, with sadness. Throughout all these years of my life, I learned one thing. Life is process. When you go through the life process, if you don't learn the secret of enjoying the, the privilege of living and growing and changing. The other part of the formula that I give to you is enjoying the process of learning. Doing things, learning, and enjoying it. I remember when I was younger, I took my family to camping to enjoy vacations. I would start with determination that is where I'm going. So I was just driving like crazy to get there and then put up, pitch up the tent and spend a night, two nights, three nights, and then ready to come back and <clears throat> that's the home. I never enjoy the sceneries along the way. But when I grow older, I get a little bit smarter. <laughs> so I do enjoy along the way where I'm going, what I'm doing. So that is secret. Doing things, it's okay. While you're doing things, learn something better to do those things. And then while you're in the process of learning, enjoy it. This is what I'm teaching my students, teaching my children, teaching my grandchildren. These three parts of this formula, doing, learning, enjoying, okay? So now, the third one that Jesus, indication of uh, the true disciple of Jesus, said, love one another, John 13, 34 to 35, said that, if you love one another, you are my truly, my really, my true disciple. That's what Jesus said. In other words, our relationship with one another has something to do with our relationship with Jesus Christ. And then the Bible said, if we say we love Jesus, we love God, but we hate our brother and sister, you are lying. That's the Bible said. If we say we love God, we have to love our brother and sister. And Jesus said that if you love one another, that is the indication that you are truly my disciples. Very clear. Very clear. But as a pastor for many years, I discovered that so many brothers and sisters in Christ hate one another. 
want to eat one another, fighting like crazy. Never forgive, never said, no, I cannot love with this one. I cannot come close to this one. How could that happen? Is that we said that we are the disciple of Jesus Christ? We want to be a true disciple of Jesus Christ? Then love one another. That's what Jesus said. So the other one said, obey Jesus' teaching. John 8, 31 said that if you hold on my teaching, you are my disciple. And then you know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And Jesus gave the uh, parable, said that not only listen to my word, but doing my word, practice my word. He said that those who hear my word and do, do the word I said to you, just like a wise man built a house upon the rock, when the rain comes, the flood comes, the wind blows, the whatever it is, this house will stand. Nothing can destroy this house. Why? Because we are based on the foundation upon Jesus' teaching, Jesus' words. So our life has a strong foundation. But then he said that for those who just hear my teaching but not doing according to my teaching, just like a fool, build a house upon the sand. When the rains come, the flood comes, the wind blow, whatever it is, then the house will be destroyed. That's what he said. If we are the true disciple of Jesus Christ, not only hear his words, but do according to his words. Practice. Practice. I know that it's not going to be easy. I always ask my students in the classes, said, do some calculation. You as a Christian, you calculate how many percentage of your lives based upon Jesus' teaching and how many percentage of your life based upon the ways of this world. So a lot of people give all kind of answer. But the truth is, not too many people Spend a lot of your life upon Jesus' teaching. Your everyday activities, not much based upon his teachings. So if we want to be the truly of Jesus' disciple, then obey his teaching. The word obey doesn't mean just believe and trust, but have to live it out through our daily life. The last one, the true disciple of Jesus, be like him. Romans 8, 29 said that God will help us to conform like his son, only son, Jesus. In other words, be like Jesus himself. That is our purpose. That is our goal. And that is our desire, that final day when we come face to face with him, we will be like him. Doesn't mean that look like him, have the hair like him, have the feature physical like him, no. But our way of life, way of thinking, way of ad our attitude and our expression of life, our relationship with God and our relationship with other people exactly like him. That is his true disciple. Okay, my time's running. So let's go to the second question that I like to ask. To be set free. Set free from what? Based on the biblical basis, there are several things I like to uh, sp spell it out. First one, biblical basis says slave, we are free from 
slave of sin. We know that after Adam and Eve have sinned against God, we human race fall into the power of sin. We have the nature and the control by the power of sin. For that reason, we even have a good intention to live right, to live according to God's will, but because that sinful power, evil power within our lives, we are being enslaved with that power. So when Jesus come to this world and give us the truth, the life, and most of all, the resurrected power of Jesus Christ, we are set free. We are set free from sin. And Jesus came to this world had two main purposes. One is to take care the issue of sin. Jesus knew that how difficult and how painful suffering for people to be under the law of sin. Just when in the Old Testament, when God here the Israelites being enslaved in Egypt. God hear their cry. God hear their pain. God hear their suffering. That's why God came to Moses and said, Moses, go into the Egypt and set my people free from slavery in Egypt. So that's what the truth will set us free from, slave of sin. The second one, condemnation. The truth will set us free from condemnation. Hebrews 9, chapter, chapter 9, verse 27, said that according to the law, every man has to die once. And Jesus come to die once for us to set us free. But after we die, come judgment. Then Jesus come and take care of that power of judgment or the sting of the judgment. We don't have to be judged. The final day when we, when we go to the heaven and then when we line up to, uh, to be sentenced to live or die, you see Jesus stand right there. When come to our place, when come to our turn, he look at us, said this one free. Why? Because I pay his sin. No more judgment for him. So that is free from judgment. The third one, free from death. Yes, people say that, yeah, we have to die on earth here. Our physical death. Every one of us have to face it. But Jesus come to set us free from death eternally. We don't have to die spiritually. But most, furthermore, we don't, finally we don't have to die even physically because we all believe that the final day when Jesus comes, we will rise from the death. We have a new body, but we don't have to. Right now, we rest. Now we rest for a while, but the final days, Jesus will set us free from death completely, both physically and spiritually as well. Then the next one, separate, separation from God, because sin was the one who separate us from, uh, from God. As soon as sin comes to our lives, we no longer cannot, we no longer can connect it with God. We are separate, just like Adam and Eve. As soon as they sin against God, God no longer come and walk with them in the garden of Eve. Because sinful human being cannot walk hand in hand with the righteous, and pure God. 
righteous God. So separation. When Jesus came, he became the middle man, bring the sinful man back to the righteous God. So he is the so-called mediator. Middle man between sinful man and the holy God. That's what he came and set us free from separation from God. And most of all, he set us free from alienation between human beings. You know, nowadays, no matter how different we are from one nation to another, from one tribe to another, from one race to another, but because of Jesus Christ, that we could come together. Just look at out here, so many different kind of people. Look at my, myself and my wife, totally different race, different kind of people, different nationality, different culture being. But because of Jesus Christ, we come together. We can live as a family, we can, a husband and wife. No longer that we can, we will be separate because of our differences. He makes the difference, the, the uh, diversity become unity, one. Now, I will take it very quick, three minutes, to give to you an application. <laughs> the first one, how then our daily life to live, that we being set free by Jesus, by the truth of God, then how we live everyday life. The first one I say, we have to be careful about our self-centeredness. You know, in the past, we always thought that the world is the center of the universe. And then in our lives, we think that we are the center of everything around us. But the truth is, it is not. God is the center. We are just go around him go around other things. So a lot of problem in our lives because we take ourselves too seriously that we are the center of this universe. The second one, set us free from the worldliness around us. Nowadays, in our so-called globalization situation in this world, there are so many worldly things that we have to be very careful. We are now being controlled by the worldliness, by the new technology, by the all kind of new world idea, new laws, and new philosophy, new world teaching. So we being caught up with that all kind of worldliness. So be careful. God wants us to be free from those then false teachings of the age. Jesus warned us that toward the end of this world, there's so many false teachers going around trying to convince us to believe in their false teachings. Even within Christian teachings, there's so many false Christian teachings. So we have to be very careful. We have to study the Word of God. We study the Bible carefully. So we can differentiate what's the true teaching of God, what's the false teaching of God, what's the true teaching of Jesus Christ. So that is what God can give us the power to be free from the false teaching in our days. Then the, sec the next one is modernism, okay? New recoveries, uh, new, new discoveries. You know, IT and it's good. New technology, good. There are many, many good things. But at the same time, come with all kinds of bad things, evil things. So we have to be very, very careful. The last one, meaninglessness of life. Even we have a lot of knowledge, a lot of information, a lot of new technology, a lot of new equipments for life, make life easier, make life more convenient. But at the same time, inside of us become empty. Inside of us become meaningless. More and more people, I just have an article that how many people in Thailand commit suicide, killing himself. Every, every 
hours. How many people I forgot the information I got? That means very, very alarming. People killing, why? Because they feel like life has no meaning, no value, no, no meaning to live on. So they commit suicide. So that is what Jesus come to set us free from all those things. Right, my time is gone, so I make a conclusion. So that if we want to live a purposeful life according to God's original plan for each one of us, we have to first be his true disciple. As long as we his disciple, be a true one. His true disciple. Then we need to be set free from all negative elements of life. Then we have to submit ourselves to live as a free man, free from all kind of negative elements of life around us. To respond to his will and purpose for each one of us. May God bless each one of us. Let his truth and let his teaching set us free. May God bless you. Praise the Lord for his message that have come to us through his servant this morning. You shall truly tithe all the increase of your grain that the field produces year by year, and you shall eat before the Lord your God in the place where he chooses to make his name abide. The tithe of your grain and your new wine and your oil of the firstborn of your herds and your flocks that you may learn to fear the Lord your God always. From Deuteronomy 14, verses 22 and 23. We will remain seated during the offertory while singing the hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be.
Now let's all stand and sing with our hearts and with our voices the doxology. All together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let's pray. Our loving Father, again, we thank you for your word. We ask, Lord, that we may not only be hearers of your word, but doers, those who put your words into practice every day, every hour, every moment. We thank you for your mercy again to us. And pray, Lord, that you by your spirit will continue to work in every one of us who are willing to listen and to obey your word. Now may the peace and the blessing of God the Father, the fellowship, the grace of God the Son, and the fellowship of God the Holy Spirit be our portion today and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Please be seated. It's a great joy to see each one of you here again this morning. Some of you here for the first time. Some of you here for the hundredth time. The Lord bless and make you a blessing this coming week. If you have been blessed this morning, we encourage you to bring a friend or an associate, someone that can come and share the blessing with you. May you go into this week determined to be a, what? True disciple, following him in every way. Lord bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.